Hey everybody, Terry D-Lab. In this video, I'm going to cover a very important subject when it comes to the use of these old vintage tube receivers. Back in the day when the manufacturers built these, they knew that this equipment would go into the hands of experienced ham radio operators. So they weren't so concerned about hot tubes or high voltage because these guys knew how to work around that. Well, the days have changed. Okay, so we have a lot of newbies getting into the science of ham radio and short wave, and I think it's great. However, there's some hazards that you need to be aware of, especially when it comes to the standby function of these radios. So on the front panel, there's a send receive switch. Okay, that switch turns on and off the high voltage in the radio, which is around three to four hundred volts DC and it's good for a good amp of current, all right? So if you get across that, it might only shock you if you're lucky, but it could also kill you, okay? There's enough potential there to easily take you out. So a lot of these guys are getting these and they're teaming them up with transmitters, right? So when you key up your transmitter, you need that receiver to mute, all right? And we use normally what's called a Dow key relay, okay? And there's a set of contacts right here. So the coaxial connections will switch your antenna from the transmitter to the receiver. But then you have these contacts which mute the receiver. So if the mute contacts are turning on and off the high voltage in the radio, you can be directly exposed to 300 volts DC, let's say. If you're just cleaning your radio or moving it, you happen to reach back there and you're not watching what you're doing, kerbammy. All right, let me show you the schematic and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. Here we are backside of the National 183. So just for reference, I mounted the TR switch to the back of the receiver. So this side would feed the receiver and this side would go to your transmitter. This cable would be the control power coming from the transmitter to tell this guy to toggle. And if you look around here, there's your auxiliary contacts for muting, so there would normally be a wire going from here over to the standby plug, all right? You see these jumper wires? Well, according to their manual, you're going to remove the jumper from pins 1 to 4, and that goes through the contacts of this leaf switch, and that's what makes and breaks the high voltage. You can see that right here in the manual. See, it says for remote send receive, you break pins 1 and 4. Right there, B+. plus. That's over 300 volts, so that's going up through your switch back to the radio. So how do you avoid this situation of a possible shock hazard? Well, I've got a solution, and we are going to integrate it into this radio. Well, here's the solution that D-Lab can offer you to eliminate that shock hazard. It's called the K1S switching module. Okay, this module mounts inside of the radio, as you can see. It's going to do the high voltage switching internal, and it's also going to short out your antenna when you're transmitting to protect the front end of the radio. It's controlled by 12 volts DC. You simply short the 12 volts with an external TR switch or even one of those MFJ control modules. It's only 12 volt switching at low current. All the hazardous switching is done internally. So let's get it wired up. So there's a module installed. I simply adhere it to the chassis. As you can see, there's plenty of room in here to work with. These two leads will go over and switch the high voltage to that jumper plug that I showed you earlier, okay? Now to key the module, you can either free up a pin on that standby plug and connect it there, or you can install an RCA jack on the chassis and it simply has to short the center conductor to ground to key up the K1S. And that is how I'm going to do this installation. Well, there's the board installed. The red and black wires go over to pins 1 and 4. You just piggyback them on the back of the current terminals. You do not have to unwire anything. The green wire is the filament supply that's going to pin 3. You can verify all this on your schematic. 
This black wire, of course, is ground going to chassis. Swing over here. Blue is my key input. So when this is grounded, it'll key up the board, mute the receiver, and then this white wire shorts the antenna terminal to ground. So the last thing. So the new K1 standby system is installed in the 183. So let me show you what the voltage is now at the mute jack. A little over 16 volts, much safer than 300. Now what's nice about this RCA type of mute jack is if you have one of these new MFJ TR switching systems, their output is also an RCA plug. So you would just simply plug that cable into this jack and when the MFJ unit grounds to mute, it'll mute the receiver. Let me show you that. Get my meter out of the way. So, I'll bring up the RF gain a little bit here. There's a station. Here's our mute function, okay? There it is muted. Back to receive. Back to receive. So you can see it's pretty smooth operation. The only other thing that you need to ensure that you do is set the send receive switch on the front of the receiver to send, okay? This system runs in parallel, so if you keep it at receive, the muting will not work. Well, so there it is, a nice method for muting your receiver and making it safe at the same time. If you want one of these little K1S modules, drop me a line. Not only will it go into these national receivers, but I've installed them in Hamlin's and other models, okay? So it's pretty universal. Just tell me what you're trying to install it in, I'll get you the information. So at the end of this video, I'll post the diagram so you can see how easy it is to hook up the K1S.